sends it and per sorry, Fine. let me start over. Um, so uh, language interpreters, um, we're doing sequential until we start the uh, interpretation function. So um, I'll get through the housekeeping and then um, you get, well, I'll cue, cue you in when you um, have a little portion. Uh, good evening and welcome to the AC Transit and Berkeley Department of Transportation virtual public meeting on the Durant Avenue quick build project. My name is Ryan Lau. I'm an external affairs representative at AC Transit and will be your moderator for tonight's meeting. This meeting will be recorded and posted on the AC Transit website. Next slide, please. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, before we begin, we'll take a moment to review some housekeeping items just so everybody um, knows how to sort of navigate the space. Um, first, closed captioning is available by clicking the CC icon in the Zoom screen banner labeled closed captioning. From there, toggle the translate icon uh, and um, just to note, the closed captioning is not 100% accurate, so um, apologize for that. Uh, please give a moment for us to have our interpreters to provide um, these instructions as well. Um, so I'll hand it over to the Spanish interpreter, and then um, they will be followed by the Chinese interpreter. Para subtítulos okay. en el idioma de su elección en la reunión de hoy, usted puede hacer clic en el icono de eh, eh, subtítulos que se pone CC. Cuando hacen clic en los tres puntitos que dice More or Más, van a ver CC. Pueden hacer clic allí para ver los subtítulos y elegir el idioma de su preferencia. Y también vamos a tener interpretación simultánea en español durante esta reunión. En breves momentos ustedes verán en la parte de abajo de su pantalla de Zoom un icono del globo terráqueo. Pueden hacer clic allí y seleccionar el idioma español o Spanish en el menú. Gracias. Chinese interpreter, can you um, read your portion? Hello,大家晚上好,欢迎你参加今日AC 如果你想翻译的话,你也可以选你喜欢的语言,选你喜欢的字母语言,然后选择中文,做你的翻译。然后在中文上面,想要收听这个会议的朋友,一旦我们打开同声翻译的时候,你就可以看中国的地球的投票
an overview for the Durant Quick Build project. Um, it we'll hear about next steps and we'll be taking questions at the end. I'd like to now introduce Brendan Pittman, engineer at Kimley Horn, who has been coordinating the design treatments and project planning efforts for AC Transit and the uh, City of Berkeley Department of Transportation. Thank you, Brendan, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, Ryan, and good evening and welcome everybody who's joining. Um, thank you for joining us tonight for this public information meeting on the Durant Avenue Quick Build Project located in the Southside neighborhood. We will spend the first half of the meeting presentation uh, on the project and the last portion of the meeting receiving your feedback and answering your questions. During the presentation portion of the meeting, we will introduce the project uh, team, <laughs> discuss the project need and objectives, and review uh, the specific design components of the project. Information on a separate yet parallel project along Durant Avenue dealing with the street's curb management will then be presented. We will finish up the presentation with information about the project schedule and next steps. The Durant Avenue Quick Build Project is sponsored by AC Transit with agency partnership from the city of Berkeley. I will now turn it over to AC Transit for introductions and then move to City of Berkeley. Will? Hello, I'm Will Buller with AC Transit. I'm a traffic engineer. And uh, um, Catherine Vo will not be here uh, today. I'll be filling in for her. And we have uh, Ryan Lau and uh, also um, Others, um, Robert Del Rosario, also participating in the background. And as well mentioned, I'm Robert Del Rosario, Director of Service Development and Planning for AC Transit. Um, I think Ryan already uh, Ryan already introduced himself. Uh, Tammy, do you want to introduce yourself? Tammy Kylo, just being the host of the Zoom meeting. Okay, on to Berkeley, Elliot. Hello, I'm Elliot Schwimmer, Senior Transportation Planner, City of Berkeley Public Works, and the Project Manager for the City's Curb Management Strategy. Okay, uh, again, my name is Brendan Pittman from Kimley Horn. I'm the Consultant Project Manager and one of the Design Engineers for the project. Kimley Horn is assisting both AC Transit and the City of Berkeley with engineering services, in addition to design services during the construction period of the project. Uh, joining me tonight from Kimley Horn, we also have Jorge Morales and Tessa Kemper, who will be saying some words later. So just talking about the project need and objectives here, uh, AC Transit and the City of Berkeley recognize the importance of providing and promoting quality transit operations along this corridor and in the South Side neighborhood and Durant Avenue is a key transit corridor in this area. Current transit service along Durant Avenue consists of multiple AC transit local lines, school lines, and an all-nighter bus. These lines include the line 6, 36, 51B, 79, 604, 605, and 851. These lines connect students, educators, visitors, and residents from the university and the south side area to all over the Bay, downtown Oakland, Emeryville, Alameda, and El Cerrito. The corridor is also one of the most vibrant neighborhoods in Berkeley, home to restaurants, bars, shops, student housing, and other campus buildings, among many other uses. The dynamic mixed traffic flow and parking behavior along this corridor often causes delays to transit service, diminishing transit service reliability and impeding access to riders. Uh, this project aims to address these needs by implementing infrastructure elements to increase transit time reliability, reduce conflicts between buses and vehicles, improve safety and quality at existing bus stops, and streamline pickup and drop off operations. To accomplish the project objectives along Durant Avenue, 
AC Transit identified three infrastructure elements to deliver. These are implementing a transit only lane for the full length of the project area, converting three of the existing bus stops along Durant Avenue to bus boarding bulbs, and installing a transit signal at the intersection of Durant Avenue and College Avenue. I'm gonna discuss each of these elements in detail in the next few slides. The first design element is to implement a transit only lane along Durant Avenue between Fulton Street and College Avenue. Uh, this will be accomplished by converting the southmost vehicle lane from a general purpose lane to a fully red transit lane. Uh, this conversion is sometimes called a road diet as general purpose vehicle lanes are repurposed for other roadway uses, in this case, for a transit lane. Transit lanes, also known as a bus lane, or preferential lane uh, will allow AC transit buses to bypass traffic and improve transit time reliability for riders. The lane will also be marked in red paint for high conspicuity. Uh, at intersections, right turn and left turn movements will be clearly signed and marked as just shown by that arrow that just popped up on the screen. For example, uh, approaching Dana Street, the transit lane will transition from continuous red paint markings to dashed markings to signify that right turning vehicles can enter the lane, the transit lane, and make the turn. There are several design elements that are associated with the transit lane implementation. Again, I mentioned the red paint markings. You may be aware of the red painted transit lanes on Bancroft or other locations around the Bay. This is gonna be a very similar treatment. Red paint is being installed to enhance the regulatory condition of the lane. Red paint is an improved traffic control device for transit only lanes and will help mitigate unintended use of the lanes such as double parking. Second, and somewhat most importantly, the project will install signage to clearly regulate the use of the lane as shown in the middle picture. Exceptions to this will include use for fire and emergency vehicles and turning vehicles where allowed. Finally, a continuous channelizing curb system will be installed adjacent to the Ellsworth Street and Dana Street bus stops. Uh, the channelizing curb system will be placed on the stripe that divides the general purpose lane and the bus lane, similar to what is shown on the picture on the right. These elements will hopefully discourage general purpose vehicles from improper use of the transit only lane in those areas. As previously mentioned, the transit only lane will consist well, sorry, excuse me, will utilize the existing roadway width of what is today a general purpose lane. The transit only lane will be 11 feet wide, with the general purpose lanes being 10 feet and 11 feet wide. The width for the current parallel parking spaces won't change on either side. The figures on the slide illustrate the roadway cross section at two locations, one at a new bus boarding bulb, which we'll talk about later, and the other image shows where parking is allowed on both sides of the street. The next major element that will be delivered as part of this project is the installation of bus boarding bulbs. Bus boarding bulbs are curb extensions that align the bus stop with the parking lane, allowing buses to stop and board passengers without needing to divert out of the transit lane. Bus bulbs help buses move faster and more reliably by decreasing the amount of time lost when merging in and out of traffic at bus stops. You may be aware of the existing bus bulb located just east of the Durant and Telegraph intersection, shown in the picture on the right. This was built several, several years ago and will be very similar to the bus bulbs delivered as part of this project. I will briefly go over the locations uh, where the three bus bulbs are proposed as part of this project. The first location will be just east of the Ellsworth Street and Durant Avenue intersection. 
This location is characterized by, as you can see, two very large trees and a nearby driveway. The boarding bulb will not impact access to the driveway and it will fix the damage to the existing sidewalk and gutter system due to the shallow root systems of the existing trees that have heaved the sidewalk and damaged the gutter. <clears throat> The second location will be just east of the Dana Street and Durant Avenue intersection. This location is characterized again by several large trees and a new, nearby UC Berkeley dormitory. The boarding bulb will allow for two 40-foot standard AC transit buses to board passengers at the same time. Damage to the existing sidewalk again and the gutter system will be repaired as part of this improvement. The final location will be just west of the College Avenue and Durant Avenue intersection. This location is the last stop on Durant Avenue for several AC transit bus lines before they turn right onto College Avenue, notably the Line 51B uh, line. Um, south of the existing stop, there is a wide walkway entrance uh, to an adjacent UC Berkeley dormitory. Uh, this access won't be affected by this new uh, boarding bulb. Several smaller trees with tree wells are also present near this walkway and to the south of the existing bus stop, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, the location is marked by a steeper incline than the other two locations, um, but we'll still maintain accessibility, which we'll discuss a little bit later as well. The proposed bus bulb at this location will allow two 40-foot buses to board passengers at the same time. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Jorge, who will talk about the design elements for the bus boarding bulbs. Jorge? Thank you, Brandon, and good evening, everyone. The bus bulbs will come with standard design features, including new bus top shelters with lighting that will be powered via grid connection and activated during evening hours in times of low light. The proposed transit shelters are the same model as the shelter seen on this image, which is located on the existing bus stop at the Durant Avenue in Dana Street intersection. The bus shelters will be an open back configuration with a bench to provide comfortable waiting areas for passengers. The bus bulbs will also include accessibility features such as a level five foot by eight foot loading area adjacent to the curb with 2% maximum uh, cross lobes to allow buses to extend the ramp to load people with mobility impairments. The near level loading areas will be at the front of the boarding zone and accessible from the transit shelter and adjacent sidewalk. The bus bulbs at intersections of Dana Street and College Avenue will provide an additional level loading area to accommodate the loading of passengers for two buses at the same time. The extra sidewalk space provided by the curb extension could be used for installation of additional amenities like trash cans, bike racks, and supplemental area lighting. Tessa will now discuss the landscaping elements of the project. Thank you, Jorge. This project also includes a minor landscape component. At the Dina Street location, the City Urban Forestry Department has identified that a tree seen in the picture on the left is dying, and they've requested that it be removed. The project will remove this tree and install a new tree in its place. Additionally, for better long-term maintenance and performance, the city has identified the tree well grates and trunk frames at the College and Durant location to be removed and replaced with rubberized tree well material. The product proposed is similar to the other tree wells along Durant Avenue in the area. This project will be protecting all other trees and landscaping within the project area, and we have worked with this together with the City Urban Forestry Department on the means and methods that the construction contractor must follow. I'll turn it back to Brennan to discuss the traffic signal work. Thanks, Tessa. Uh, the last major element of the project is the installation of a transit signal at the signalized intersection of Durant Avenue and College Avenue. The offset intersection alignment, uh, the near side bus stop, and the number of buses turning right from Durant Avenue 
uh, onto College Avenue create conflicts between buses and vehicles uh, today. Um, currently, buses turning right need to reposition out in the vehicle lane to make and negotiate this turn, as shown in the picture on the left. A transit signal is proposed for the Durant Avenue direction uh, to help mitigate these interactions and allow buses to jump ahead of the traffic queues to speed up transit operations and improve transit reliability. A transit signal seen on the picture in the right is a separate signal that has two white indications, one in the vertical and one in the horizontal. The pictures on this slide show the two phases of the transit signal. The picture on the left shows the horizontal bar configuration, which indicates that buses are prohibited from proceeding. The picture on the right shows the vertical bar configuration, which gives vehicles, sorry, transit vehicles, the right of way to proceed through the intersection. To deliver this infrastructure, a new traffic signal pole will be delivered on the southeast corner of the intersection. The existing traffic signal pole on this corner will be removed and a new signal pole with a mast arm uh, will be installed in about the same location. As shown in the sketch above, the new pole will include the transit signal indications, signage, and a normal red, yellow, green traffic light uh, for normal vehicles. An activated no right on red sign will be activated when the transit signal is active to mitigate the conflict between general traffic and buses when the transit phase is activated or on the go phase. I'm now gonna turn it over to the city of Berkeley for uh, more discussion on curb management along the corridor. Elliot? Thanks, Brendan. In a complementary but separate project, the city will be implementing a curb management strategy with the following goals. To reduce instances of double parking on Durant Avenue between the mid-block crossing east of Telegraph Avenue and Bowditch Street, to increase the availability of curbside parking and loading spaces so vehicles can pull all the way up to the curb and are less likely to double park in a general purpose lane, and to reduce the potential for vehicle loading conflicts with future buses operating in the bus only lane on the south side of the street. Next slide. To identify parking and loading needs in the project area, we collected observational data over four time periods in April 2023. Data was collected on weekdays during the morning, midday, and afternoon peak periods, as well as on a, on a Friday evening. During the times observed, 211 vehicles were observed loading, 164 of these vehicles were double parked. As shown on the top chart on the right, more loading activity occurred on Friday evening than during the weekday observation periods. The majority of loading occurred between Telegraph and the Durant Food Court, and the vast majority of vehicles were loading for less than five minutes, as shown in the chart on the bottom right. Dwell time, which is mentioned in the bullet and the chart, refers to the amount of time a vehicle is stopped for loading and is not moving. Next slide. Because the vast majority of vehicles were loading for less than five minutes, the general theme of the curb management strategy is to encourage curbside availability by reducing the amount of two hour parking spaces and increasing the amount of short term parking and loading spaces. In general, the two hour parking spaces in front of commercial buildings will be replaced with a mix of 10 minute parking, 30 minute parking or loading zones. To the west of Telegraph, on the north side of Durant, the two hour parking zone will be replaced with a 10 minute parking zone and a loading zone. On the south side of the street, the two hour parking zone will be replaced with a 30 minute parking zone. To the east of Telegraph, two hour parking on the north side of Durant in front of commercial buildings 
will be replaced with a mix of 10 minute unpaid parking spaces and loading zones. The existing two hour parking spaces in front of residential buildings closer to Bowditch Street will remain. On the south side of Durant, east of Telegraph, existing two hour parking zones will be replaced with 30 minute paid parking spaces along with a new loading zone. I will turn it over to Brendan, thank you. Okay, thanks Elliot. Just a few more slides here on the on the project specific components. Um, we're gonna go into the stakeholder outreach that has been done uh, to date. Um, this project has included extensive outreach to internal and external key stakeholders over the past year to gain feedback and consensus. The project team has met with representatives from the Telegraph Business Improvement District, also known as TBID, the Berkeley Fire Department, City Parking Enforcement, Traffic Engineering, and Zero Waste Divisions, as well as Urban Forestry. And we have presented at the city's Transportation and Infrastructure Commission and the city of Berkeley's AC Transit Interagency Liaison Committee. Uh, the slide shows uh, when those meetings uh, occurred. The last item we wanted to go over was the project timeline and what is coming next. After this community information meeting and your feedback, uh, we will finalize the design and advertise the project for construction. A staff report will be de developed for the project and the city council will be asked to approve the design and allow city staff to issue construction permits. Once a contractor is hired, we anticipate construction taking four to six months, depending on the lead time for some of the building materials. Two weeks prior to construction activities, a mailer will be sent to residents within and near the project area to notify of the upcoming construction activity. 48 hours prior to construction activities, a door hanger will also be placed at properties adjacent to those specific project activities. Uh, construction is expected to finish up in spring to summer 2024. That wraps up the project specific presentation portion of the meeting. Um, thank you. And I'm gonna hand it back to Ryan Lau at AC Transit. Thanks, Brendan. <clears throat> so we're gonna be transitioning to our Q&A portion. Um, before we do so, just um, wanted to provide some additional housekeeping instructions for all the, the participants. Um, for those participating online on a computer or smartphone, please use the Q&A uh, feature of Zoom. This tool may be under more or participants uh, on the on the Zoom banner. Uh, for those, um, yeah, so um, please utilize that uh, if, if you're able. Um, for those who have called in, um, you may ask to uh, ask a question by using star nine. Um, and then you will be called upon utilizing the last four digits of your phone number. Tessa, if you can slowly roll through the next few slides just to provide um, additional instructions in the various languages. Okay, um, you can stop screen sharing now and I'm gonna ask our panelists to come up on their cameras and we'll be taking a few questions. Um, and additionally, we are gonna be recording all the questions received and if we're not able to um, go through all of them tonight, uh, we'll make sure that we're answering those um, at a later time on the website. So those will be available. So the first question that we have is, um, why is AC Transit accelerating buses on spot feeders to Telegraph Avenue um, when we, we haven't been able to uh, provide reliable 
a service on telegraph uh, due to um, narrowed and congested telegraph in Oakland. Um, and that question uh, is to Will. Hello, everybody. Will Buller, AC Transit Traffic Engineer and also co-PM on this project. Um, in some cases, other project competing demands can create impacts to uh, AC Transit operations. Uh, we always work closely with other partner agencies to avoid impacts uh, to the extent possible. After that, we look for other opportunities where we can uh, mitigate uh, the impacts to our routes. This project is an example of this. And we appreciate the partnership with the City of Berkeley to provide transit opportunity, uh, the opportunity to improve uh, bus operations and hopefully help mitigate impacts caused by other projects. Thanks, Will. Appreciate that. Um, the next question is for Elliot. There's constant and continuous double parking on Durant um, on the block east of Telegraph. How would a transit only lane uh, succeed when there's zero enforcement? We certainly acknowledge that there is lots of double parking occurring on the south side of, of uh, both, I guess, the east side of, of Telegraph. And that's exactly what we observed when we went out to the field to take a look at loading activities. Um, the purpose of the curb management strategy is to create more availability at the curb by reducing the amount of two-hour parking and increasing the amount of short-term parking and loading zones. And so hopefully with more availability at the curb, there will be fewer vehicles double parked and there's hopefully, there will hopefully be, hopefully be a, a less potential for those double parked cars to interfere with AC Transit bus operations on the bus only lane. Thanks, Elliot. And just to add on, um, so AC Transit's also uh, embarking on a pilot project uh, utilizing uh, forward-facing cameras to automatically enforce uh, against um, inappropriate use of transit-only lanes and bus stops. And so uh, we definitely hope that will help mitigate um, those infractions as well. Um, and so the next question is to Brendan. The existing transit-only lane on Bancroft was worn out and is not very visible, especially at night. What materials can be used to make the lane more clear and visible, especially at night? Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, this is really important. Um, one of the materials that we're proposing to use as part of this project is uh, MMA, which is a harder and more durable material, um, which is different, I believe, than uh, the material that was used on, on on Bancroft. So the idea is that it will wear or erode hopefully slower um, and thus maintain its properties of uh, um, of the manufacturer, which uh, the, the, the mix uh, has properties to uh, be visible um, under certain light characteristics. So um, we are proposing a, a, a harder and more durable material um, that will uh, be visible. I will say that this is the same type of material that's used um, on the Broadway um, transit lane in downtown Oakland. If the, the question uh, questioner uh, is curious about the, uh, the brightness on, on those trans lanes, those have held up pretty well over the last um, three years as well. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, so the next question is to Will. Because there will be street parking to the right of the transit only lane, what can be done to prevent delays caused by cars uh, entering and exiting the parking lane? Um, we understand that uh, the transient movement of uh, parking and, and, and moving out of parking can cross our lane and can potentially uh, cause the bus to slow on occasion. Uh, the bus drivers, um, will be trained specifically, are trained specifically for this, that we already have very similar situation um, in other cities, Oakland with our uh, bus lane. And so they're prepared for that and they anticipate it. And um, and we we continually look to different ways and methods of, of mitigating if it gets too much of a problem, we don't anticipate it. Thanks, Will. Um, we did have a phone caller with a question, but it looks like they may have dropped off. Tammy, do you still see them? Um, no, they're not on now. Okay, well, if they come back, we'll, we'll field their question when they 
uh, come back on. Um, Brendan, this next question is to you. Um, how will the traffic signal changes at Durant and college impact drivers? Will they recognize, um, will they have to recognize, respond, recognize, respond to the bus signal or just the no right on red? Yeah, good question. And uh, I know our slides will be posted and that the, the rough sketch that I, we went through on that particular uh, transit uh, signal configuration um, shows what we're what we're going after. There will be a a normal uh, red, yellow, green signal at the end of that um, traffic signal pole mast arm um, that will uh, that drivers will um, see, and that's what they will be uh, responding to. That's one of two on the far side of the intersection. Um, the no right on red will be for the the vehicles as well, and it's an activated sign. So it'll show up when uh, the transit phase is active. Um, uh, the idea is also uh, that the transit signal, when that is on, uh, the, the activated sign is on, and the, the red, yellow, green is on the red indication. So multiple ways for drivers to be aware that it's red, they can't turn, they can't go straight, um, it, it's the uh, bus's turn. Um, the transit signals also will have uh, static signs, large signs that say bus signal. So we're trying to mitigate any confusion um, between general purpose vehicles and transit vehicles. If that was confusing, feel free to uh, follow up with another question on that. That's Brendan. So this next question is for Will. What sort of physical protection is included between the transit only lane and general tra uh, travel lanes to prevent deadly speeding like on International Boulevard and double parking like we see on Durant now? If none, why was this decision made? Well, we work closely with the city to develop similar treatments like what you'll be seeing on International and other corridors. It's a, um, a system combo of a base with a channelizer um, delineator looking uh, physical plastic uh, post system and then a, in some cases a concrete base to help uh, separate the two lanes and prevent um, uh, vehicles from intrusion, intruding illegally. These will be limited right now to the areas where we're placing bus bulbs along uh, along the corridor. Thanks, Will. Uh, so we have a question for Elliot. How can my business make deliveries when they will block the only available lane of traffic? So one of the central goals of the curb management strategy is to open up curb space for loading zones and deliveries, uh, commercial and, and passenger loading. And so hopefully um, with these changes, there will be fewer instances of double parked vehicles blocking lanes of traffic. Um, with the curb management strategy, it's a relatively low cost uh, project. It's, it's essentially painting curbs and adding signage. Um, so we can tinker with the, the parking and loading um, on Durant as needed and based on, on what occurs on the street and what we're observing. Um, but this is intended to address exactly the problem that the question raises is um, allowing uh, delivery vehicles to access the curb without blocking traffic. Thanks, Elliot. Uh, so we have another one for Will. Can existing bus shelters at Dana and Durant be replaced slash upgraded? They're fairly worn out. Also, can we get higher quality new shelters like the ones at the BART Plaza in downtown? Um, as part of the project, um, we are um, um, in installing new shelters along Durant. I, I believe the question though is specifically uh, uh, targeted towards the intersection of Dana and Durant. Is that what I heard? But if that's the case, then um, it won't be included as part of this project. I mean, I'm certain, certainly we can consider it um, and have a discussion with the city about it uh, if it's possible. But right now we, we hadn't identified that stop as an improvement. Um, and right now we're focused on the 
uh, locations where and everything's been budgeted and construction uh, planned and designed um, for the locations where we are installing new shelters along. Sure. Thanks, Will. Uh, this one is for Brendan. As a bicyclist, now cars are unable to pass me by partially using the bus lane. Uh, how will this be addressed? Oh, Brennan, you're muted. My apologies. Hey, can you repeat that one real quick? Yeah. Uh, as a bicyclist, now cars are unable to pass me by partially using the bus lane. How will this be addressed? Okay. I'm, I'm trying to understand the question. Um, so my, my understanding is the bicyclist is using the southmost lane uh, kind of as a shared use. And they're saying that they now have to use the center lane. So they'll be riding in the middle. I, I hope I'm understanding that correctly. Um, I, I want to be careful here because I think Durant Avenue is is not a um, uh, planned bicycle route. Bicycles will use it. I understand that. Um, but this project really didn't um, consider a, a bicycle type facility on this street. Um, but I, I want to be really careful th about that because I I, I don't want to um, speak out of turn about the bicycle interactions on on this corridor. Again, feel free to follow up with a question if I misinterpreted the understanding of that. Thanks, Brendan. Keep an eye out. Uh, will this one's for you? Um, why is this taking so long? When will construction begin, and how will how long will it take to complete? Yeah. Um... One of the reasons that the um, project has taken a little longer to get started as far as construction get completed is because of uh, current construction uh, conditions um, are becoming very, very difficult to um, uh, to compete with. Um, limited contractors and smaller projects can become more and more expensive. So we've found we've been looking for opportunities to um you know, combine different uh, projects together to uh, get a better price, economy of scale. Um, we believe that we we have done that, and uh, we're now advertising the project, and um, uh, that should happen in the next few days. And um, we expect that um, by the uh, first part of next year, uh, we'll have identified the low bidder. And we will be able to uh, get all everything in order, all the permits, et cetera, to begin construction at uh, the beginning of spring of next year, maybe earlier, if possible. Uh, but the major activities that you would be looking for will can be expected about that time. And I would expect that the construction for the improvements here in Berkeley will take approximately six months. Thanks, Will. Uh, this one's for Elliot. TBID has been discussing multiple parklets and restriping the parking. How will the bus lane impact their plans should it go ahead? The short answer is this project, I guess the curb management strategy will uh, is will not preclude any parklet being constructed on the north side of the street should uh, the, te the Telegraph Business Improvement District move forward with that plan. Um, in terms of Restriping the parking, I am not aware of any plans for uh, T, that TBIT has to restripe the parking. That is uh, a plan that the city would be implementing and is designing um, as part of this curb management strategy. Thanks, Elliot. Um, so, Rob, um, can you take this one? Will this project enable the line 51B, which is frequently overcrowded, to operate with articulated buses for enhanced frequency? A great question, and unfortunately, no. Um, 51B travels along College Avenue, as, as I'm sure most of the audience is aware, and the stops along College Avenue are pretty tight, um, so they don't fit articulated buses. Um, so actually, that's that's the bigger um, impact um, or constraint for us with operating articulates on the 51B are the bus stops along um, College Avenue, and those are all short, short in length, unfortunately. Thanks, Rob. Uh, so, Will, uh, I've got another one for you. If possible, it would be excellent to hear why the protection 
will be limited to uh, the areas around bus bulbs. Is it cost, fire department concerns? What specifically? I'm very worried about speeding and traffic violence as we are seeing on international and want to, want to know that the protection can be expanded in the future. Okay, yeah, um, one, of the one of the main reasons is because we do have parking along the, the side adjacent to our lane. And if we were to place those separations along the entire way, we'd have to remove the parking, of course. But um, for the opportunity of expanding the um, delineators further than just immediately adjacent to the bus um, bulbs, um, you know, we've discussed that and um, and the impacts of parking and the impacts to fire uh, department um, uh, response. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're still working with them. Uh, right now, the project has chosen to cover the areas that we're covering. Um, we hope that this will mitigate the concerns that you've indicated, and we can certainly continue to explore uh, expanding it in the future if necessary. Thanks, Will. I think, did Brendan, did you want to jump in on something over here? Oh, I just wanted to also mention that uh, there are uh, the, the access on the south side of, of Durant uh, also has multiple driveways as well that, that need to be maintained. So just wanted to add that in there, Will, as well. Brendan, since you're uh, off mute, <laughs> this next one's for you. Uh, will the bus lane uh, involve a concrete road surface similar to the bus lane on Bancroft? or red paint, um, similar to the bus lanes on Broadway and downtown Oakland. Either of these features would be nice to see as they would make uh, the bus lane clearer to unfamiliar drivers. Yeah, thank you. Um, the As I mentioned before, the, the material that's gonna be used is uh, MMA, which is very similar to a surface uh, slurry type seal, um, a little bit more uh, granular than that. Um, it's going to be over asphalt concrete or uh, blacktop. Um, it's uh, not going to be over concrete. So, but it will be red, and it will be like the material that was used on Broadway. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, will this next one's for you? Uh, why not signal improvements at other locations? Well, uh, this project is actually um, meant to complement in a big way our line 51 project and the line 51 project already um, made the improvements to all the signals along this corridor the tsp upgrades uh, detection and and signal uh, controller upgrades and we are taking advantage of that and making sure that everything's coordinated properly everything's functioning properly and um and so that the entire corridor and its signals uh, will be in a full optimal operation at the end of this project again Hey, Will, do you want a quick, uh, for folks who are unaware what TSP is, do you want to just uh, spell that out? Sure. Tr uh, transit signal priority, which um, extends the green time or uh, provides an early green time along the corridor when buses are present at each signal to help get the buses through the signalized intersection. Thanks, Will. Um, so, um, we are scheduled, uh, to be here, uh, for a little while longer, um, but we, uh, we can stick around. Um, it looks like the uh, Q&A portion is slowing down. Um, so on behalf of uh, AC Transit and this, uh, City of Berkeley, uh, Department of Transportation, we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, if you have any additional questions that you think of later, you can always email planning at actransit.org. Um, you can also visit actransit.org um, and do a quick search for quick build um, and you can find additional information about the project. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Again, if, if you have any questions, you can um, fill them in um, to the Q&A portion and um, we can answer them when they come up, but um, we'll be hanging out for just a, a little while longer. So um, happy to feel any questions as they come up. Thanks.
I see a, a phone caller still on the attendee side. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, um, please push star nine, and that'll indicate to us that um, you have a question that, um, and we can unmute you.
Good evening. We have not been reporting since a little bit before 7 p.m., but have kept the meeting open for questions. It is now coming up on 7.30 p.m., and we'll be ending the meeting. Thanks, and have a good night.